everybody, welcome to this playthrough for the keyholes in Master Qualifying Round. We are going to go through hole number 1, 3, 5, 6 and 7 and I will give you my thoughts about these those holes which I do believe is going to be key to have a good and safe qualifying round to play. The video here is sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic and make sure you comment in the comment section below with what you think of these type of uh, playthroughs. Obviously we will get back to you with new videos for the opening round when the wind will change and that is also the reason why we are doing this more slim direct playthrough for the qualifying round as once come Thursday in the opening round the qualifying round win will be somewhat pointless. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also visit golfclashtom.com for more golf clash related content for free. You can also get the best guides on the market, ultimate tournament guides by going to patreon.com slash golfclashtommy link directly in the description down below. Follow the info box on the right hand side to get the elevation adjustment, club distance adjustment, but also what ball and club type I do suggest you to play on the specific holes. Obviously you don't have to follow what I do suggest, but there is a plan behind it. In the end though, thank you so much for watching and let's go to the first hole in this playthrough. We will kick off by playing hole number one and I cannot stress enough how important this hole is going to be. And here I do play with six bars of top spin, one bar of side spin to the right. And I'm using in this case, as we like to call it, a fake centurion, which is a win four power three, but only side spin two. But as we only need one bar of side spin, we can play with basically whatever win four power three ball that we do have. Centurion is one of the options, but we do have Pinecone, we do have Superstar, we do have Vintage, we do have Mummy, we do have so many of them, and that is why I wanted to focus on a ball like that to really get you a nice dialed in approach here. I will, in this scenario, I go with one ball of curl outside the adjustment ring to the right. But I would like you to reduce the curl just a little bit so you have like a point, sorry, point 0.9 of the ball outside the adjustment ring to the right. And the reason I want you to go with a little bit less curl is because with a great right, when we have wind pushing left to right, there is risk for you to then clip the rough. We do have a lot of room and that's why I want you to go with a little bit less curl so we prevent ourselves from clipping the rough. And you can also see that I start in max position, I do adjust for max plus 20. And once that is done, we will apply the curl as already described, but also overpower. And it's three rings of overpower. So three rings of overpower uh, is what you're going to have to go with. Second shot, now we're looking for absolute minimum distance line. And here we want to have our first bounce on the green if we can choose, obviously where the min distance line is, that is what decides where we're going to play. So I'm resting my target on a minimum distance line, ball guideline just slightly through the hole, and then we will be adjusting for a minimum distance with a 10% over, sorry, under adjustment as we are playing this one uphill. You can see here now we're playing uphill, that means that the ball will not be affected as much by the wind as as normal. So we adjust for minimum distance, minus 10% uphill adjustment, perfect ball. I'm going to see this ball come right at the pin uh, with our adjustment. And in the end though, and that is the reason why I do like the fact to play with a power three balls, we can always have the minimum distance in a position like that. Obviously you can play with different short irons, but Thorn is the one that I have locked in a box. Obviously a great ball will miss, but a perfect ball will result in an eagle every single time. Um, if you do make the adjustment properly. So hole one is definitely a key hole. We need to get this one to drop. For hole number three, it might be intriguing and very interesting to try to go full blast. And we're gonna talk about that in a bit. Two bars of top spin, three bars of side spin to the left. I'm using a Kingmaker X. Obviously you can play with another power four ball that only have side spin two and I'm gonna mention that also in just a bit. Blue ring to be just by the rough line bottom left of the blue ring to be exact with apocalypse level six. If playing with apocalypse level seven or level eight you go half of the blue ring inside the rough there to the left. I'm pushing my rings and I'm pushing for a maximum distance plus a ten 
and then I'm going with one and a half ball outside the adjustment ring to the left. And to get you a better uh, reference there, you go with the right side of the ball just outside that top left arrow to get the correct curl. And you're going to end up somewhere between 350 and 360 yards. And that's going to be absolutely perfect. So I've seen so many. Uh, including clan mates and people all over the master uh, master community if we can call it like that to go full blast the reason i wanted to get this video out here to make this uh, one of the keyholes is because i don't see any sort of value trying to go with a power hook over the rough will you be able to get over there yes you will but the second shot will be so difficult as you're not going to have the time the limited time we have in the qualifying round will not be enough to dial that shot in and if you're going to drop the albatross that's going to be in my opinion as equal amount of chance if you go over the rough with an aggressive drive then would you have playing it safe so i do value in the qualifying round to play safe give ourselves a safe proof for the eagle so we're not going to miss that out and the power hook will be risky as there is different wind angles to adjust for which sometimes will bite you in the butt so that is why we do lay up like that because now we are in maximum distance of our club or at least close to it now i will be playing with five bars of backspin three bars of side spin to the left and the wind comes left to right which makes it makes it perfect as we then will not have the trees in our face in any shape or form so you can see here that i'm aiming just slightly left of the pin and i will be adjusting for a maximum distance minus 10 percent again it's an uphill adjustment the same as we did have on hole number one so we play uphill which means and as you can see it there the ball will be affected less by the wind so Great ball to the left, but it's good to see that even with uh, such a uh, bad accuracy club like the Cataclysm level 5, we still get there. And obviously, if that would have dropped, that would be uh, obviously a super lucky and super bonus. I'm not expecting that to want to drop, but I'm not playing for an Albatross either. I'm playing for an Eagle. So in the end, I don't feel there is worth taking the risk on hole number 3, as I do believe we will take too high of a risk for the reward that we're getting. Play it safe. And that's why I'm adding this into the keyhole playthrough as playing it safe will be key uh, throughout the tournament to make sure that you can always in somewhat have a good spot when we are trying to get the eagle locked in for hole number three. For hole number five, we are looking to use the tailwind to in our favor, and I'm using half a bar of a backspin, stretching it out to absolute max a red ring by the rough line to the right in complete stretched out position. If you do have apocalypse level six or level five, you will be having half of the red ring inside the rough on the right. Adjustment is maximum distance plus 10, power five ball settings, and once that is done, we will push up to max. Make sure that you push up in a straight line because that is a big issue for many players that you're not pushing up in a straight line and now i'm going with three quarters of the ball outside the adjustment ring to the right in curl and we're gonna go full blast overpower and we get this one nicely obviously depending on the bounces and stuff we will either be either left or we'll be either right on the fairway or it will be in the center of the fairway. 459 was the yardage and that is important because now we're playing a linear way and then the yardage will be very, very helpful. The thing that I want you to have in mind is with the drive, you see that I've listed the Berserker ball in the info box, but I've been pl I did play with the Rose ball, which is a wind two instead of a wind one combined with power five. Why did I do that then? It's because I do want to have wind that is below 14 miles per hour, or let's say like this, 14.0 as the absolute highest wind. Because if we have a higher wind, we do risk going directly into rough at the top, and then obviously risk going into the water or at least destroy the eagle opportunity completely. So if you don't get a wind that is 14.0 or less with a berserker ball, you change to a wind two power five ball like the rose ball. We have black widow ball for an example. There's also other type of balls like that. Make sure you pick one. You can also check which one there is on goldclashtom.com slash, uh, slash balls. There you have all the balls in the game. And and that is very very important because i always want to keep us doing max overpower instead of having to guess if we're gonna take off a little bit or we're gonna take off a little bit more and stuff like that 
Now, second shot, I play Endbringer. Now I'm gonna go for a Rock Bomb. 459 yards, according to my chart, gives me 52% slider, okay? So, the thing that I will do, I will go somewhere between 5 to 6 bars of top spin, but most importantly, 0 0.2 left spin, and ball guideline should be just to the hole with the blue ring by the edge of the rough, okay? So, adjustment here, once again, is 400 and for 459 yards, is 52% slider, 20% elevation, and it's power 5 ball numbers. And you can see here, we adjust from a higher to a lower point, which obviously will be having some slight of an effect. Unfortunately, this shot is very important to have the spin correct, as if you're having too much top spin on this shot, you will see yourself uh, being playing in the glitch that is on the green, but most of the cases this one will drop very, very nicely, especially if you do with the correct adjustment. Tough one, tough drive, but it's very rewarding, and this is a situation where I do feel that this hole is tough enough that we do have a wind that could definitely play well. I see many players trying to go for green directly and have dropped several balls into the water. And I do believe layup like this uh, prevents you from at least losing a shot and it increases an opportunity for an eagle massively compared to just lay up and play with a long iron. Have in mind though, this is a qualifying round and we play in tailwind. If we do have a crosswind or a headwind, this is an absolute impossible way of playing and that's why it's a specific way of playing in the qualifying round where we're gonna have to adapt for the wind changes come tournament. For hole number six with this type of win, there is a brilliant chance for us making an albatross here, which I've dropped myself a couple of times already. Max top spin, one bar of left spin, stretch out to max and look for the red ring by the rough line. Apocalypse level five, level six, you have half of the red ring inside the rough to the right. Adjustment is maximum distance plus 15, and then we will be pushing up to max. Once again, make sure that you push up in a straight line so you don't push up with the ball guy line being all, you know, diagonal or weird. Max overpower with half a ball of curl to the right, great left and great right will be safe, and we are bouncing on the fairway nicely. You may be wondering why do I play with a power 5 win 5 ball where I could play with a better power ball and go with less overpower. The reason for that is because now we can play max overpower all the time. And I do think that if we play master, we need to be able to rely, rely on our abilities to hit close to perfect with an overpowered shot. If I would be playing with a power three or a power five ball with higher wind, especially, that would be a problem for us as then we're going to have to either pull back our target, um, you know, from max distance or we're going to have to reduce overpower. And I don't like to do something half. I do want to do something, either no overpower or all, if I can do that, obviously. And in the end, though, when it comes to the drive, we're looking for a specific yardage. And we're going to take a look at this one again, because I do feel that this is a very important one. As we do play a linear way on this hole, we can use yardage notes. Obviously, if you have a really bad great right or a really bad great left, you may consider seeing you to have either two, yet you need to check your club distance, obviously. But with a minor great left, minor great right, or a perfect, I have been dropping this one according to the yardage table that we do have. And I will give you the slider percentage based on the yardage here for, the, for this drive. But you see how nicely this ball comes over and bounces and then get a little extra push there by the roll and we're looking to get somewhere between 450 to 455. 455 equals a total of 44% slider, 15% elevation. And the thing that I will be doing here, now first I stretch out to check for maximum distance and such, but it's not really needed when we do have the yardage table to follow. So I go two bars of side spin to the right and one bar of a backspin which we'll see now. So we have one backspin and two bars side spin. We're looking for the tip of the ball guideline to obviously be to the pin, but one green square short because we have a tailwind and we will come in too hot if we are not leaving that ball guideline short. 8.2 miles per hour and have in mind we play 44% slider from 455 yards. 15% elevation is needed there as well as for the slight downhill approach. And now it's all about hitting perfect. 
perfect ball and we'll see the ball bounce nicely on the fairway we love how the camera turns around like that and we know it's going to be close and we hit the pin for a lovely albatross the thing once again everyone that we do need to have in mind here that for those of you that haven't played uh, the qualifying round will definitely be much easier with this these keyholes but you can also learn from this by moving forward into the tournament as well to you know maybe think oh, hmm, we have a similar win maybe we can adapt and do something direct you know and obviously everything is listed in our patreon guide so make sure you get them if you want them so hole six in my opinion very good chance for an albatross For hole number seven we will be playing a tough par three but we do start with two bars of side spin to the right one bar of backspin now look bottom left of the blue ring by the bunker and the ball guideline pointing towards the hole very very important once that is done we will change to go half a bar of backspin and two bars of side spin to the right instead once that is done, we will be adjusting for a medium distance plus 5, and in that case it's going to be 6.8 rings. You will notice here with my pull is that I'm not pulling, I'm actually pushing my rings, and that is because it's going to be easier than to get the control of the amount of rings that you're going to have to get. However though, not using grid lines, it is difficult to push the rings as we are so used uh, to pull them instead. So, now time to take the shot and we hit a perfect ball and we will see the ball bounce on the fairway. We love how the camera turns around like that then we know it's going to be close and it comes in right at pin for a lovely hole in one. Again, hole seven is not a hole that I do expect to drop that many times, but it feels really, really good to have a good shot in the qualifying round to see if we can't get that extra drop that is going to be valuable. So hole number seven, I do believe that is the best of the par threes that at least going to get you consistently close and sometimes get you a drop. Thank you so much everybody for watching this playthrough for five keyholes of the Master Division qualifying round and we are have been taking a look at hole number one, three, five, six and seven and I do think those holes are going to be very important. Sure, hole number nine for those that are wondering will be important as well but I do think that is a pretty straightforward one as we do have a very favorable win for the third shot but especially the other holes is going to not be needed to drop to qualify but it's always nice to get that little extra you know getting a minus 12 minus 13 in the qualifying round should be, be it should be considered a decent score to move forward with but in the opening round it's time to accelerate i do believe that we will see somewhere between minus 9 up to minus 16 17s to qualify here for the uh, for the opening round video here is sponsored by gold clash and play demic and make sure you get our very valuable guides ultimate tournament guides not just for master but also for rookie pro and expert and we will update throughout the week for the various win changes to come thank you so much for watching and a good luck in the stateside classics tournament